What's up, everybody? Welcome into 2019. I hope you guys are having an amazing year so far. I'm jumping back into YouTube. It's been a few months. We did a bunch of covers with my friend Caroline. And that was awesome. We're going to hopefully be doing more of those in the future. But for right now, I'm going to be jumping into doing some tutorial videos. Um, the first one today is about using multitracks within Ableton Live. So I feel like there's a lot of confusion a lot of times in how to get multitracks into Ableton Live. Some people use session view, some people use arrangement view. So we're gonna go through all that today. I'm gonna to show you how to use multitracks all the way from downloading them to pulling them into to Ableton, to getting them into arrangement view, how I set markers and things like that, how to route your audio to your audio interface, all that fun stuff. So without further ado, let's jump in and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, everybody. So when you first jump in to Ableton Live, this is probably going to be your default view. You're gonna see something like this. They usually have a couple MIDI tracks and a couple of audio tracks in here um, just to start you out. So the first thing you wanna do is delete these first three tracks. So you won't need the two MIDIs or the one audio. We're gonna keep this fourth audio down here um, and I'll explain that in a minute. But you can delete these three right here and then you can jump over to arrangement view. So you do that by clicking this little icon over here on the right. You have these little horizontal bars up here and then you have the vertical bars down here. Um, so this is arrangement view and this is session view. So session view, a lot of people use that use multi-tracks and that's kind of your clips in basically stacked on each other. So you'd have like a clip here, a clip here, a clip here, a clip here, so on and so forth. Some people prefer this method. I personally prefer arrangement view because it's easier for me to see left to right as the song progresses down, down the arrangement. Um, and it's also easier for me to cut up the arrangement and create different versions or if I want to like repeat a bridge or whatever during the song. It's easier for me to do that within this arrangement view. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to create what's called a tempo track. So a tempo track is what tells Ableton what the tempo of the song that you're dragging in will be. So because you have to think of it like this, if you're looking at arrangement view right here, you may have three or four songs in this one arrangement view. So as you go from song to song to song, you're going to want to know what the tempo of each song is that way a Ableton's metronome will follow that tempo of that song and that way all of your bars and beats and measures and everything is lined up so today i'm going to be using the song pieces that we're doing this week as an example i've already downloaded the multi-track um, it's in a folder on my ssd my external hard drive so one neat little trick that i'm going to show you real quick with ableton if you want to have quick access to your folders you can go down here on the left, if you look on the left here, and hit the plus button down here. You can select the folder that you want to be the default folder um, over here as like a favorites, basically. So I can click this folder down here that has all my multitracks in it, factory able to multitracks, and I can hit open. And now this folder is down here on the bottom left. So whenever I open Ableton, even if it's a brand new session like it is now, I don't have to go hunting for that folder. It's right here. There's multitracks and multitracks too, which are my two folders uh, for multitracks. So what I usually do is I'll select the folder, I'll select the overall folder, and then I'll search for the song. So in this case, I'll search for pieces. And it'll highlight the folder that it's in. Then I can drop it down. And then, boom, there it is, Pieces Live version, Have It All, is the album in B-flat. So this is the Ableton file. This is what you actually want to drag over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make the tempo track that tells Ableton what the metronome should be. I'm going to show you how to make it out of a multi-track. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to drag it over here where it says Drop Files and Devices here. So we're gonna drop that right there and it's gonna do its thing and bring it in. So now you see all of your tracks here. They're all laid out, click, guide, drums, percussion, bass, electric, piano, keys, so on and so forth. So this is all the tracks that encompass this particular song. So the first thing we need to do is create a tempo track. That way Ableton knows the tempo of this song. So if you look up here in the top left, it's at 120 right now. And I know that the tempo of pieces is 72. So 
obviously that's a little bit of a mismatch and the click would not match at all with the song at this point. So what we want to do to create a tempo track is we just need basically a blank silent audio file. So a quick way of doing that is to take, for instance, like this guide track right here, find a little piece of it. It doesn't really matter what. So I'll take like this right here and I'm going to right click and copy that or command C and go up to the beginning of this, this Ableton file bar, bar one, and I'm going to hit paste or command V. So now what I can do is I can double click on this and I'll bring over here this volume where it says zero dB. See the volume getting higher and lower. I'm going to bring it all the way down to zero. So there's nothing there anymore. This is now just a silent audio. There's nothing, there's nothing that's going to play through. So then I can hit warp and then loop, which loop is nice because what I can do is I can infinitely drag this out now, even longer than it was before. So see, I can just keep dragging it and it's just going to keep looping even when, it, if it's longer than the song itself. Um, so now we have our silent audio file. It's looped, so we can make it as long as we want. So we can use this tempo track for any of the multi-tracks that we import. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to rename this because right now it's still named guide and that might get confusing. So I'm going to rename this tempo. And for this particular song, it's 72. So I'm just going to name it tempo 72 BPM. I'm going to name the actual track over here, which is still named audio one. I'm going to name it Tempo. And you rename things in Ableton with Command R. So Command R is you click on it and Command R and it will rename it. And it'll give you the option to rename, rename it, I should say. Um, so you have your Tempo track. It's silent. So you've taken the, the gain down here. You've taken it down to zero. So it's not you're not going to hear anything. Or you can also pull this down too if you want. But it's just easier to take it out of the, the track itself. Um, so now you have a tempo track. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to go down here to this sample box where we were before, where we hit loop and warp, and you're going to set this BPM and you're going to set it to 72. So you see where it says segment BPM, SCG dot BPM down here, set that to 72 because we know that's the tempo of pieces. And then you're going to click this button down here where it says slave and click master. So, what that'll do is that'll make it so now that your click will line up with this song. Now there's a built-in click track, as you can see here. Um, I'll expand it just so you can see what I'm looking at. Um, this right here, this built-in click track um, that comes with the songs. I don't use this because I prefer to use Ableton's built-in uh, multi-track or uh, click track, and it's easier to me to be able to edit arrangements when the bars line up and everything. So now everything would be like this is this is a downbeat. This is a downbeat, that's a downbeat, 85, 86, 87, 88. So the track's all lined up. So if I needed to like cut out a bridge, I could just come in here and highlight all this and highlight you know four bars worth and, and delete it or whatever um, if I needed to. And now everything's all synced and lined up because we've set that tempo to 72. So what I'll usually do is I'll just um, turn off, disable the track over here. If you look to the right, um, you see the click track right here. I'll disable it because it's not really needed, honestly. So now you have your tempo track, which is set. So Ableton knows that the tempo is 72 beats per minute. Um, and then you have all of your tracks below it. So the next thing I'll do is I'll come over here and I'll highlight all of these tracks over here, right? That are belong to pieces. So you have click track, guide, drums, percussion, bass, electric guitar, one, piano, keys, so on and so forth. So what I'll do is for organizational purposes, since we will eventually have multiple songs in a session, I'll do command G or right click and do group tracks. And that'll put them all in this little folder right here. So see now they're organized and then you could take that folder you need to do command R and I usually name it the song. So it's pieces and I usually color code it red, not for any particular reason other than just I want it to be red. Um, so now we have that in place. We have our tempo track up here. So we could make this a little bit shorter, a little bit longer. The nice thing is, is like once the song ends, if you and the band are still flowing or whatever, um, the click track will keep running as long as this tempo track is. And we looped it so it can be infinitely long. It'd be as long as we need it to be. And it'll just keep running at 72. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create a marker or a locator. So I want to add locator, right? 
and I'm going to name this pieces. So now pieces is in here. It's at number one, this little marker right here. You see me dragging around. I created that. All I did was right click up here and do add locator. Um, and now I have pieces in there. The click in Ableton up here, 72, which is synced with the track. Um, and so, and we've organized. So now the last thing I want to show you in this video is audio routing. So I have an audio interface here in my home studio that has a bunch of outputs. I think like 32, it's kind of ridiculous. So what I do with my interface when I run tracks live is my keys are coming out of one and two output one and two of the interface, the tracks. So if you go up here and you select pieces, right? And you drop it down and you see over here it says master what you can do is you can select external out and then select what channels you want your tracks to go out of so my keys go out of one and two when i play live so my tracks go out of three and four and then i go down here to guide and do the same thing because i want it to go out a different you don't want to hear the guide in the house so um i go to external out and go to five so now my multi-tracks, because they're all in this one group, so that's another advantage to grouping, is you can just select the whole group and do external out three and four, and then just change the guide. So the, all the multi-tracks are going out, outputs three and four of my interface, and all of the guide stuff is coming out of output five. So now we have all that done, we have our audio routed, we have our track in here, we have a marker set, we are grouped, and we have our tempo track. So like I said, the tempo track is nice because you can move it around. So for instance, if you had another song in here and you wanted the next song to be, or the next song was like 70 BPM, for instance, you could select this tempo track up here and do command C and then choose a location like right next to where this one ends and command V, C and command V like that. And then you can take this and double click on it again and come down here to the bottom left and change this to let's say 70 beats per minute and click master slave again so it registers. And then I would go ahead and change the name so you know that this particular one is 70 BPM. So now if you had another song, you could add the locator and do song number two. I have song two right here at 70 B P M. So I hope that information was helpful to you guys. If it was, definitely leave me a comment down below and also leave me a comment if you have any other questions at all. I'll be sure to get back to you as quick as I can. I'm also down for making any videos, tutorial videos on anything else, uh, main stage, Ableton, Pro Tools, Studio One, gear related stuff. In the near future, I'm actually gonna be doing a series on my entire live rig rundown from top to bottom. So that'll be cool, but definitely let me know in the comments if you guys wanna see anything else or have any other questions about things and I'm definitely willing to make videos about any of that as well. So I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day, night, week, whenever you're watching this and I'll see you guys in the next one.